How can you protect your money when hiring a contractor? Six News knows there are plenty of good choices out there, but one bad choice can turn your home improvement project into a nightmare. Six News reporter Andrew Moore has covered plenty of these stories and now wants to make sure you don't become a victim. Andrew. Yeah, Monty, 6 News is tired of seeing people go through bad experiences with contractors. So before you start your next home improvement project, we want to make sure you know how to spot bad contractors ahead of time, how to keep from losing money during the process, and if you are taken advantage of, how you can get that money back. Let's get started. Uh, no, he never showed up to do the roof and he never brought the materials to finish the roof. When Camille Rind paid a contractor to redo her roof, he never came back and she didn't know how to track him down. So step one, when dealing with a contractor, ask them for and confirm their business address. A reputable contractor will have ties to the local area and a regular place of business, even if it's their home. Contract attorney Paul Sanderford says a legitimate contractor should have a place you can track them down. They have a vested interest in both having and maintaining a good reputation in that community. So they're, they're not leaving work undone all over town. Once you have that established, it's time for step two. Make sure you have a complete contract. This will have a description of the work, a required date of completion, the rules for paying the contractor, and signatures. If you get something like this proposal from a Ruben Alvarez. That's his contract. Make sure everything is in there. Sanderford says you should ask for more than a one-page proposal or invoice. Never, ever, ever use anything like this as a contract or to substitute for a contract. Instead, insist the contractor write you something with a completion date and rules for payment before you sign anything. And that brings us to step three. Hold on to around 50% of the payment until the job is done. When Pam Bulls hired Alvarez, they had a payment plan, but then he needed better materials. $750 because it was more expensive. And she paid, but never saw them. If the contractor tells you they can't finish under your agreement, don't give in. Say you'll hire someone else. Worst case scenario, the contractor leaves halfway through the job. Well, you've only paid out half of the money. Of course, sometimes contractors do find ways to get your money without upholding the deal you made. The good news is it's not as hard as you think to take them to court, and there is a chance you could get your money back. Step one, collect the evidence. Receipts and payments, um, that it's so easy to take photographs. You'll need the contract, proof of payment, photos of what was done and not done, and any documented communication. If your contract has everything we mentioned earlier, this will be much easier. Step two, file a claim in small claims court. It's not as hard as you'd think. Small claims court is set up to be user friendly. Pam Bowles filed a case against Alvarez and won. It was easy. I just had to write a letter stating my case, take all my evidence. But unfortunately, simply getting a judgment isn't enough because as we found out, the court won't enforce it for you. If the contractor doesn't pay willingly, you will have to take step three, hire an attorney. Sandiford says the attorney can attempt to collect through a garnishment, which goes after their finances, a writ of execution, which goes after property, or other means. Additional legal steps are required to be taken then to convert that judgment into money. Sanderford also told me most attorneys should be able to handle that process, so if you have a trusted family attorney, call them. Of course, the best thing you can do is avoid hiring an unreliable contractor in the first place. And to do that, we have the six fix, six questions you should ask a contractor before hiring on our website right now at kcentv.com. Imani? All right, thanks, Andrew.